Nasser Mashni in Sydney. He's the president of the Australia-Palestine Advocacy Network. Really good to have you with us, Nasser. As I say, we are looking at these extraordinary live pictures from UCLA as uh, uh, masses of police attempt to disperse the protest encampment at UCLA. What's your response to what we're seeing now? Oh, I'm absolutely outraged. It's really disgusting. The home of the free, the land of the brave. America has always uh, prided itself on being the bastion of liberal democracy, of freedom of speech, of liberalism. What we're seeing here is, in fact, everything that they have uh, con condemned in other countries. Uh, what, what we are seeing is more than enough reason for America to feel that they need to give democracy to other countries. It's beyond despicable. Um, what we're seeing here, violence against students, students who are protesting, who are standing up for justice, trying to stop a genocide. It's shameful. Well, that's right, because what we're seeing here at UCLA is uh, but one of uh, dozens of protests happening at campuses across the United States. As you say, uh, the student demonstrators, inc including many academics as well, have joined in on these protests, urging their universities and colleges uh, to stop supporting uh, Israel. Uh, to stand up for uh, the Palestinian people who they say are continuing uh, to be massacred in Gaza. Demonstrators are, are continuing at dozens of such campuses across the US and we know there have been uh, more than 1,000 arrests, perhaps more as a result of what we're seeing now at UCLA. Uh, for now though it seems that the students at UCLA are, are determined to stand their ground even in the face of, of this heavy uh, police presence. Uh, what would you say is going through the students' minds uh, at this point, given that it is past 4 a.m. in Los Angeles, they are being faced with uh, police in riot gear, uh, we're hearing sounds of, uh, of uh, bullets of some kind being fired uh, by police. Uh, what do you think is going through the students' minds? Well, firstly, can I just say, it's not just the hundreds of campuses in the United States, but in fact, all over the world. In Australia, we have six campuses now in Aotearoa, New Zealand, they're setting up as we speak. So this flame that was lit in Colombia, this flame that is a hope for a better future that starts with the liberation of Palestine, with the ending of the genocide in Palestine, it should be uplifted in the knowledge that students have always been right. They were right about Vietnam. They were right about apartheid South Africa. They were right about um, Iraq, Afghanistan. They have been right about everything to date. The future belongs to these students, and I hope that they are buttressed by, uplifted by, the struggles of their four, the students that came before them, and that they look and are inspired by what has been achieved uh, throughout time by peaceful protest and that they continue to do that and they are not uncowed. And as I see with this vision here and in Australia, we had two of our encampments attacked and invaded by Zionists. Um, apparently Zionists, uh, not just in Israel, in Palestine, understand only the language of violence, but also uh, in uh, other countries as we uh, exhibited yesterday, whilst the police and security guards stood and watched for a number of hours, the amount of violence and force that was allowed to be perpetuated onto these non-violent protesters sitting in peace, sleeping, whilst the security guards and police watched on is just shameful. This is, in fact, the end of this empire. This is, in fact, the end of this concept of colonialism that is Zionism. It's just but one small domino in all of the dominoes that need to fall for a better world, a better world for us all, and I'm uplifted by the spirit and solidarity and strength of those students. And what the machine doesn't understand, what power doesn't understand, that in fact, they are creating a recruitment drive. These videos are a recruitment drive for other people all over this precious earth who are disaffected and disempowered by the power structures that continue to oppress them. Uh, yes, uh, we're reminded, of course, of the events that happened just on Wednesday when a, a masked pro-Israeli group assaulted pro-Palestinian 
student protesters before offers were finally called uh, to the campus. The California governor, Gavin Newsom's spokesperson, said that the limited and delayed police intervention was unacceptable. Why are we seeing the two groups of protesters being treated so differently at the hands of security forces, where just earlier we had uh, pro-Israelis uh, conducting uh, violence against these peaceful demonstrators, yet now we're seeing such a heavy police presence in the face of these largely peaceful uh, pro-Palestine protesters? Well, there's no, no question, number one, that Zionism, that militarism, that the state of Israel is lockstep in power with US imperialism, uh, police force and the military. Many police forces are trained in Israel. They do um, uh, uh, cross training between each other. I mean, I saw a, the Twitter post of, I think it's the New York um, police chief. It's actually got a flag of Israel and the flag of the United States in his Twitter post. Um, uh, his Twitter profile. There is absolutely a correlation between the violence of the state and settler colonialism and genocidal Zionism. There's, there is a complete disparity, complete disparity. If this had been, the roles had been reversed, if it was a peaceful Jewish sit-in and Palestinian, pro-Palestinian supporters had uh, attacked, invaded, encroached upon well, we know the response would have been completely different. Helicopters would have been dispatched, SWAT officers, marksmen on tops of roofs. The reality is we saw it in the Black Lives Matter movement. We saw it in every, from um, the, the beating of um, African-Americans, the, the death and uh, mayhem that happened following um, George Floyd's uh, killing, just how brutal the police is in, in keeping white supremacism uh, in power. And what we see here is the pro-Israel space is in fact an extension of that white power, that um, supremacy and that ideology of uh, white supremacism that manifests itself ultimately in Palestine as Zionism. And there is a significant link between those uh, military arms and police arms. And that's why, I mean, you know, I saw a meme and it said it took the police so long to get there because they had to get out of the Israeli flags and dress up as police officers. Uh, Nasar, as we uh, continue to look at these live pictures uh, from UCLA uh, of uh, a heavy police presence uh, attempting to disperse uh, the pro-Palestine uh, pro student encampment there, it's probably worth reminding our viewers that this all began on April 17 when a small group of students set up tents at Columbia University in New York to protest against Israel's military action in Gaza and to ask the university to cut ties with companies that profit from Israel's incursion in the enclave. As you say, not only has this movement spread to dozens of university campuses across the United States, but also internationally. And you're in Australia, Nasser. Australia was one of uh, the first countries that saw uh, these similar protests uh, pop up uh, in uh, an international setting. Explain to us, why do you think uh, this same message of solidarity with Gaza, with Palestinians, has had such an impact on students in Australia? Well, I think the world is much smaller than it was when I was a, a university student. The connectedness of humanity now with our smartphones and whether it's apps or communication uh, applications like WhatsApp and Skype, etc., the world is much smaller. And to see what Israel has done in quote unquote self-defense, to see what Israel claims to be uh, some democracy that, you know, in a hostile neighborhood, the reality is the students today, the students today are not um, having, haven't had the brainwashing that Murdoch had put through generations before. They have been um, inoculated from that mainstream media that led so many of the decision makers today that are in power to believe in this myth of um, messianic Israel, that it was a land without people for people without a land. These students today have read. They've been able to be in contact with Palestinians. They are lives, the citizen journalism that's happening in Gaza and streamed um, through Snapchat and through um, TikTok and, and all the other uh, messaging services are, are unfiltered. 
you know, Murdoch, Sky News, Fox News are not corrupting this generation's mind. So they're, they're able to make the decisions of their own. These children who understand that their tomorrow is being frittered away, whether it's in the economy or whether it is um, what's happening in, in Palestine, and that what we are seeing there, left unchecked, will, it will become the template for all people across the world. This is beyond um, any single issue. This is a, a question of humanity. With the genocide unfolding in, our, in front of our eyes, what you are doing today, what you are saying today is what you would have said in um, Srebrenica, what you would have said at Rwanda, what you would have said during the Holocaust. And the fact that some people feel that it is correct that Israel is doing the right thing by destroying every single school, hospital, killing 50,000 people, 15 or 20,000 children, that is using starvation as a weapon. This is just outrageous. And to think that you know instruments of power continue to defend Israel, that the US Congress is passing laws uh, banning um, any form of speech that criticizes the state of Israel is beyond the pale. America, the, the emperor is standing naked. He has been exposed. And children, these, these uh, leaders of tomorrow, these uh, you know, amazing students are just not gonna take any part of it. And they are standing up for A, their own right to be able to protest, but B, to highlight what is happening in Palestine. And all eyes must be on Rafa, all eyes must be on Gaza, all eyes must be on all of historic Palestine as Israel continues its genocidal 76 year program. This is not 205 days old. Okay, uh, Nasser Amashni, thank you so much for that. If you wouldn't mind just staying with us,